Hello, my name is Pieter Provost. I am the data manager at the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I will inform you about a number of recent updates in the OBIS data platform and how you can use these to develop data products and applications on OBIS data. So what's new? Well, first we have event-based data sets. The concept of structuring a data set around an event core came out of EUBON and was rapidly adopted by the OBIS community. This approach is very well suited for rich monitoring datasets, which are a primary focus for OBIS. OBIS datasets used to consist of flat occurrence tables, but we now promote the use of event records, such as stations, transacts, quadrants, samples and subsamples, tracker pings, etc. The information in the event records, such as time, location, sampling methodology and environmental parameters, is used to enhance the associated occurrence records. So when these are downloaded, all this information is included. Also new are the so-called generic measurements or facts. In 2017, we came up with our own version of the Darwin Core Measurements or Facts extension, which supports occurrence level measurements in event core datasets, as well as linking to vocabularies for measurement types, values, and units. Since then, nodes have gradually started providing measurements or facts data with their occurrences. These data are now indexed in the OBIS database. This also goes for measurements uh, linked to event records that do not have species occurrences associated with them, which is particularly important for the habitat essential ocean variables. Many datasets will have data on macroalgae or coral cover, for example, but no occurrence records of specific taxa. And finally, we have our quality flags. These are not only included in the occurrence downloads, but can also be used to filter when fetching data from OBIS. The code for the quality checks is available on GitHub as a Python package, and we will integrate this into our R package as well to make it easier for data providers to perform quality control before submitting their data to OBIS. The quality flags we have are still largely based on this paper by Van de Pitte from 2015, but we intend to add more flags and align our test suite with the work of the Tadwick Data Quality Interest Group. So what does this mean for you as a researcher or data provider? Well, by aligning your data with Darwin Core and making use of the Extended Measurement or Facts extension, you can publish your data sets as self-contained packages with detailed information on methodology in a predictable format which is easy to interpret. If someone wants to reproduce or research, there is no need for them to reconstruct your data from bits and pieces of information from different sources, it's all there. In addition, your data can now be reused as part of the integrated global dataset for other purposes, such as global or regional assessments, thanks to the interoperability provided by Darwin Core. And finally, we perform a thorough inspection of your data, which can help you to improve its quality. So I think all of this combined can really help data providers increase the impact of their data. Before we take a look at some practical examples, let me quickly introduce our data pipeline. OBIS harvests data from its regional and thematic nodes, who really take care of most of the data management work. Nodes receive data in a variety of forms and shapes, including Excel files, CSV files, and different kinds of databases. They make sure the data are transformed to Darwin Core and meet a number of quality criteria. They then publish the datasets on an integrated publishing toolkit, or IPT server, where we can pick them up. Datasets get indexed continuously, and the integrated OBIS dataset is exposed via the API. The API is what powers our portal and the mapper, but it's also available for third-party developers. Developers can connect to the API from any development environment, but if you're using R, there's the R OBIS R package, which makes this even easier. Uh, the API is documented at api.obis.org, where you can try out the different endpoints in the browser. These include endpoints for fetching occurrence data, of course, but also for metadata, gridded occurrence layers, checklists, and statistics. All these endpoints accept a number of filters, such as time, location, depth, and taxonomy. Uh, the R package can be installed from CRAN, uh, but it's also available from GitHub in case you want to use the latest development version. I'm now going to demonstrate how you can interact with the OBIS database from R, but as mentioned before, you can do this from any environment, for example, directly from a web-based dashboard. Okay, so this is R Studio. This is my R development uh, environment. And in this first script, I'll go over uh, the basic functionality of the R package. So first I'm going to use the occurrence function. 
uh, which just fetches uh, raw occurrence data uh, from the UBIS database. And in this case, I'm just going to pass a scientific name to get all the occurrences uh, for this species. Okay, so this, this gives me a table of 51,700 uh, records and 106 uh, columns. So you'll see that most of these columns are Darwin core terms, but there are some uh, other columns that we've added ourselves, uh, for example, with the, the quality flags. Another function is the checklist function. So let's say that I want to see all the names that have been uh, observed uh, for this family. I can use the checklist function. And this gives me another table, 106 names and 38 columns. And most of this information comes from the World Register of uh, Marine Species Worms. So let's uh, visualize the top 20 names. As you can see, Abra alba is the most observed species for this family. Um, we also have uh, family level observations, sorry, genus level observations and family level, level observations. Um, I can pass uh, many different filters to, uh, to all of the Arobis functions, uh, including location. So let's say I want to get observations for a certain polygon. I can use this function to draw it on a map. So let's say I'm interested in this area here. Okay. This gives me a geometry and WKT format. And I can pass that to the occurrence function. Um, in this case, together with a species name and also a start date. Okay, so now I have close to 10,000 records of this species. So let's put it on a leaflet map. There you go. So Leaflet is a JavaScript framework for creating interactive maps, uh, but you can also use it from R. Let's take a look at the quality flags now. Okay. So in my data set, I have 82 records that have the flag depth exceeds bathymetry, 15 which have the same flag but also are located on land, we have close to 5,000 records that don't have depth information and so on. So let's take a look at the depth exceeds bathymetry flag. So I'm plotting all the observations here with on the x-axis the bathymetry and on the y-axis the depth. So any point that's located on the right of this dashed line has a depth that is less than the bathymetric depth, so these are fine. To the left of the line, they have a sample depth that exceeds the bathymetric depth, um, but we apply uh, a threshold here, so uh, we only flag the points that are that have a sample depth that is well below the, the bathymetric depth. We can also use quality flags to uh, filter the data when we fetch it from UBIS. Um, so in this case, I only want to get the records that are located on land. So that's 2,000 records for this species. And again, I can put them on a map to see where they are located. So all the red points are located on land according to uh, the OpenStreetMap uh, shorelines. And so now I, I can go into my data set and, and fix these points where necessary. And finally, we have the measurement or facts. So here I'm going to call the occurrence function and I'm going to specify that I want the measurement or facts records to be included. Okay, and now I just have to use a measurements function here to extract the measurement of fact records which are nested inside the, the occurrence uh, records. So this will give me a measurement of facts table. And if we take a look at that, we see that we have information on sampling instruments, biomass, length, we have counts, um, we have uh, sample areas, mesh sizes, uh, abundance, and so on. Okay, so in this uh, second script, I'm going to focus on the measurement or facts data. 
And first I'm going to fetch all polychaetal occurrences from the Southern North Sea. Okay, so now I have 172 occurrence records. And again, I'm going to extract the measurements. And in this case, I'm only going to keep measurements that have uh, abundance in the measurement type. Note that uh, in the script, I am using measurement type and measurement unit, not measurement type ID and unit ID. And that's because um, these are not populated yet in all, uh, in all UBIS data sets, but that's something we're working on. And if we now take a look at the data set IDs in our measurements, we can see that we have measurements from 20 different data sets in our table. Let's take a look at the measurement types and units. So these are all abundance. And as you can see, they're using uh, many different units. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to apply another filter and only keep abundance measurements in units of uh, uh, individuals per square meter. So let's take a look at the data set IDs again. So I have data left from nine different data sets. And let's put these on a map. So this is my area of interest. And these are the nine different data sets that I have uh, abundance data for my uh, for my area. Now let's take a look at which uh, species are best represented in our data set. So we have Laniche conchilega, we have Neftis Sambergi. So I'm going to extract extract all the occurrences of Neftis Sambergi and put them on a map. Okay, so now I have all my records for this one species and I gave it a nice color and size scale to visualize the abundances. And I've also added uh, a pop-up here just to show the abundance measurement and the catalog number. And finally, I just want to mention that uh, it's really easy to publish your R code as a web application. So here I'm visualizing a Swedish Bentic data set. Uh, so I have some filters on the left. Uh, so I have species here, variable and the year. And then on the right for that year, I'm showing the uh, measurement values on a map. And I also have a graph with the variable over time for each of these uh, cells. So I can pick another species here. And I can also take a look at uh, the other variables. Thank you for listening and please get in touch if you have any questions. Uh, I'll make all the code that I've used in this uh, talk available on GitHub at this uh, uh, URL.